What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 13 of our data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial series. In this part what we're going to be doing is joining in some new data. So up until now we've really only brought in data from the housing price index. But the idea here was to see if we could bring in other forms of data. So in this example we're going to bring in the 30-year uh, conventional mortgage and then later on maybe we'll bring in even more data uh, probably in the next tutorial things like the you know economy and stuff like this and then after that we can at least make our best attempt to feed it through some sort of machine learning algorithm and see if we can make any sort of uh, gains that way so uh, with that let's go ahead and just hop right into it uh, we're going to use this 30-year conventional mortgage from Quandle which uh, is here you don't really need to go here or anything like that if you don't want to. You just type in the ticker that I type in. But this is the data here. And so as you can see, this is the mortgage rate. And so we can see that as the mortgage rate basically over time has gone down, and we can see this kind of hump in the mortgage rate, at least here. I mean, that's, that's such a huge interest rate. Uh, like, Can you imagine having like a 30-year mortgage with an 18% interest rate? Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine buying a house at that point. That's incredible. Anyway, um, moving this over. First, what we're going to go ahead and do is um, we need to grab the data. So just, you know, wherever you want, but let's, I'll just code it in right here. And what I'm going to say is define mortgage uh, underscore 30 year. Now, we, we could define a function that pulls data from Quandle. Uh, so like we could enhance Quandle's get, okay, um, but uh, it would have a lot of conditional statements in it and stuff. So this just makes more sense to me for now. But I mean, if you started pulling, maybe you're pulling like 50 or 60 data points. A lot of them are going to have very similar things that you've got to switch around. So at that point, you know, maybe you make one function that does all the pulling. But as you're going to see, different data sets are going to have different things that we need to do to them. Um, Although uh, some of them you might could get away with uh, just manipulating them in the same way. As you'll see in this tutorial at least, um, we kind of have to do a little hacky way of, of fixing this data set. Uh, but you could apply that hacky thing to all data sets, I think. I mean, but anyway, moving on. Uh, so yeah, so now what we're going to do is uh, df. Uh, let's actually, um, we don't want that query. Don't we have another query? Yeah, we have this one. Let's um, let's at least start by taking this because we're going to have to do a lot of the same things. So let's just copy that, come up here, paste. Uh, it's not fmac HPI USA. What we want is actually fmac, but so it's still Freddie Mac providing it to us. But we're looking for the mortgage. This is that conventional mortgage. Um, also, this one starts a little bit prior to when we want it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a trim start. So we'll say uh, trim, whoops, trim underscore start equals, and we're going to do in quotes here 1975-01-01 uh, here. Now this one, just bringing it over to show you, returns a row called value or a column called value. So we want to rename that column for sure. So as you can see, some of them need column being renamed, some of them don't. Some of them have multiple columns, some of them don't, and so on. So it would be really hard to write a single function. This is still probably the easiest way to go about it. But again, if you're pulling like 50 data points, maybe not. Uh, anyway, uh, so actually, we get back data, a DF, like, um, we'll get back value. So what we'll do here is just go, uh, we'll just do this value for now. So we'll just say DF value equals value value so we're converting this to a percent change uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and print actually we'll just return that data frame up there and then for now we'll come back to this stuff but I'm gonna comment it out alt 3 and first we're just gonna say DF equals this so copy that DF equals that and then I'm just gonna print df.head so we can see the data we're working with. Got an invalid syntax. Forgot a comma. Done. Try again. Okay, so we pull the data. Sure enough, here we have it. Now, what is different between our data and uh, the original data? Well, part of the problem here is that, uh, first of all, this says value. We need it to say something other than value. But also, it's sampled at beginning of month. 
all our other data is sampled at end of month. So for example, um, we can, we don't want to grab initial data, but we can grab this here and we can print HPI underscore data dot head. So we'll run that real quick. Still got to pull the other data, but that's okay. Um, so as you can see here, these are end of month. Okay. So what was what what would you initially think? Well, you'd probably initially be like, okay, okay, this is simple. We'll just resample, but end of month. Since we just have that one value, it'll probably just take that value and apply it to the end of month. And in theory, that's not really a bias at all because these we're actually moving this data to a later date, right? So you're not worried about bias. If anything, you're harming yourself using this data later than you would actually have it. So okay. So what we might do is we come up here back to our mortgage 30 year and we might think, okay, here's what we're going to have to do. We are going to say df equals df dot resample and we're going to resample to the month. Okay, fine. We try that and we got a bunch of not a numbers. Okay. Now it's probably because we don't have enough data <laughs> in that month to make a valid calculation. Okay, so then the next thing is like, okay, well, what would happen if we did, you know, we resample by day, right? So lower sample than what we are actually, that we actually have. Okay, so you start off with a zero, and then we've got all these not a number, not a number, not a number, because obviously we don't have that. Actually, instead of doing uh, that, let's uh, come down here, print df, like so. So we'll get a little bit more. Okay, so you actually have your data points, but mostly as you run through, uh, you're left with not a numbers, although we're not really being given many first of the months, but there they are. So then what would happen if, okay, we resampled the day, what if we did then df equals df dot resample to, whoops to month. Let's try that one again. And wouldn't you know it, we got some data, right? That worked out. It had enough data apparently to do it that way. Even though in theory it was still doing that calculation with one data point and a bunch of not of numbers. Doesn't matter. There she is. Awesome. Okay. So we have that data there and we kind of, I mean, I understand that we kind of cheated slightly, but uh, needless to say, we, we got the data. So now what we're going to do is let's go, uh, I want to leave, I mean, I don't really think we need the axes data anymore. I mean, we might end up, we'll probably come back to graphing, but I mean, there's no reason to always have it there if we're not using it. Uh, we don't need to print any data frame here. Uh, the mortgage 30 year, let's, let's change that from saying DF. We're going to say that's now M30. I'm going to just move this down. So we're going to say M30 equals mortgage 30 year. We've got the HPI data here. And we do have a way to calculate that benchmark. So let's go ahead and make that one too. Let's grab in all the data basically. HPI underscore uh, bench equals, and we're going to say that equals HPI benchmark. Okay. So then the only thing to keep in mind though is that we've got M30 and this is being given the column of value. Now we could replace value either, either in the code or even in this function, but it, it really doesn't matter, but it's probably best to replace it in this function. So what we'll say is uh, df.columns, uh, that should, this comes back with an index. Don't forget, Quandl is just by default gives us an index, which is very great for, of them to do. Most of your data sets won't. Uh, but this one's going to do it for us. So we just have a single column. So we can say df.columns equals, and then we're just basically renaming this column to M30, just so we know what it is. Um, so then what we're going to do is we can take, um, basically we can join, we can leave the benchmark, we can join the benchmark, we can do whatever we want, but we could say, uh, we can say something like this, state HPI and M30. We'll just call it something like that, equals HPI underscore data dot join M30. Okay. And then what we could do is, first of all, let's, we don't need to print that out, but we're fairly confident that's going to work. So instead what we'll do is we'll print 
Um, let's print H, or let, I'm just going to copy this, so take, typing that out. Print that dot correlation. So first, that's just like the correlation of the entire data frame, of course. So we'll wait. There it is. Okay, so um, I'm not seeing my M30. Was it join M30 mortgage 30 year? That we should have the. Uh, I would I would have expected M30 to be at the end. Let me go see if I'm just missing it or what. Maybe it got truncated out and we're just not seeing it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it is here. I guess it just slapped it. In. I don't know. Did it? Do we? Have, we're not printing out anywhere else, are we? Grab initial data we print. Sorry, I'm just goofing off. Apparently. Oh, okay. I see what happened. Okay, so this was hidden from me <laughs> at the bottom here. That's why it's not there. So, because when you join it, it should go to the very end. That's why I was like looking at the very end. I'm like, where is it? There it is. Okay. So here we can see the correlation of the 30-year mortgage rate with the state housing price indexes indices indexes I don't know now we can see that uh, mostly the column that we're curious with is this specific column I mean we can kinda look at some of the data here obviously there's one that's negative 54 wow that's a that's a pretty low negative correlation I suppose we could say weak um, but we, we can f make fairly decent assumptions here that the the 30 year mortgage rate obviously would have an effect on the housing prices right the mortgage rate uh is either an incentive or a disincentive to buy a house like that you know when we we're just looking 18 percent oh my gosh <laughs> i'm not paying that rate over 30 years you can go out of get out of here now so what we're curious about yeah we want the correlation but we're also we're mainly interested in that m30 row so correlation M30, um, but we just looked at that. So really, what we're interested in is maybe let's get the describe here, so we can get the minimum and stuff. Obviously, the maximum we don't really. That's going to be uh, itself, right? But here we can find out. Um, that's odd. Don't, I swear we saw a negative. Oh, this is the minimum. So in theory, the maximum would be that probably negative 54, but the maximum in this case is the 1.0 because of its correlation with itself. Ah, we could get rid of that row, but what, whatever. <laughs> or you could replace, you could do like uh, where one, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. So here we have though, basically the, the you know, like the, this is the 75th percent and it's still in the low 70s, but still negative 70, that's very strong. So. I mean, no surprise to us, but yes, indeed, uh, the 30-year mortgage is, has a very strong negative correlation to the prices. Again, we kind of, we, you know, you, you can obviously assume that is going to be the case, but it's always good to see how negatively correlated it is, okay? So um, I think that's where we'll, we'll, we'll cut off this, this tutorial, but the idea here is, you know, once you get all this data and get the figures, first of all, knowing the, the correlation values, you could probably write out a pretty decent-ish formula using the current HPI. Um, well, I guess set, a, set aside the current HPI, and you could say something like this. You could say, okay, well, um, the HPI ought to be, um, you know, something times, you know, the 30-year mortgage plus, you know, something about the... Uh, I don't know, the market, the economy, equals HPI. And if the current HPI is greater than that, then you would say, okay, we're worried about the market. Or if it's less than that, uh, if the current HPI is less than that, then maybe you'd be like, well, there's going to be a correction soon. We should invest in the housing market. Now, my best guess is probably the best strategy is to still just, just buy the housing markets that diverge down <laughs> from the housing price index, especially if the housing price index is diverging up at the same time as the other one is diverging down. I think every time you have a situation like that, like if you're starting to get past negative uh, 0.5 correlation between any housing price index with the housing, the overall U.S. housing price index, make a buy there, and I bet that's where you you'll do very well for yourself. But um, we can test that maybe later on. Uh, this is mostly just trying to get us familiar with doing panda stuff, but maybe we'll we'll throw that in at the very end. 
uh, just to see if I'd be a very good real estate investor. <laughs> but after this, what we'll do is we're going to add a few more data points in the next tutorial. We're going to kind of do that a little faster. Uh, and then after that, uh, we're going to bring in Scikit-Learn to do machine learning. And we're going to see if we can apply just a really basic machine learning algorithm to this data and see if it does any good, you know, going further. But the idea there is just to kind of show you guys that you can work with data in a PANS data frame, manipulate, blah, 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 output that data to a NumPy array, feed that through whatever other data analysis library you happen to have, but Scikit-Learn is a really powerful one. Um, and do some really, really cool stuff. Uh, I don't really have too much hope. At least at this stage, we would probably want to collect a lot more data, and you want to collect data that was, is more like futuristic outlook, probably, uh, rather than the current HPI, the current economy, and the current, you know, whatever. You might be better off looking into uh, futuristic projections, like in the economy. You can usually get growth estimations, stuff like that. You can usually get employment estimations, and uh, interest rate, you know, because people trade, you can look at interest rates. This is probably getting a little too deep, actually, but you can, people trade contracts and stuff that are pretty indicative of what people believe interest rates will be in the future, okay? So you can look at what people are doing there to extrapolate to the now uh, what the futuristic outlook is at least expected to be, and we can work on that. It's kind of like crowdsourced knowledge. Uh, anyway... That aside, <laughs> um, we're trying not to get too too crazy in the series. But anyways, uh, questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.